Hallelujah. <laughs> Can you say hallelujah? <laughs> it is so grateful. I'm so honored and grateful to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Emmy, Pastor Theodore. Thank you. Um, I'm just grateful how much God loves us. Amen? Amen. Who knows God loves you? Wave your hand. <laughs> yes, he loves us so much. Um, we're going to be reading from Psalm 139, a very familiar uh, psalm. Um, but before we do, I'd like to pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your awesome love, for your embrace today. I thank you that you're a God who passionately desires us. You're a God who loves us, who pursues us like a bridegroom to a bride. You are pursuing us with your love. Help us to know the true love of the Father. Help us to sense your embrace, to sense your kiss this morning in our lives, that there's nothing impossible you cannot do in our lives. Help us to know your love and help us to be so in love with you that the first thing that comes out of our lips is how much we love you and a life lived for you because we're in love with the bridegroom. May you speak into our lives this morning and refresh us with your embrace and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, it starts in Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You've known when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thoughts from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down and are intimately acquainted with all of my ways. Before there is a word on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it all. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I, I cannot attain to it. Where can I go from your spirit and where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay hold of me. If I say, surely darkness will overwhelm me and the light around me will become night, even darkness is not dark to you. And the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you. For you formed my inward parts and you wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. And my soul knows it very well. Verse 15. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret, skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in your days were all written the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. How precious are your thoughts to me, O God, and how vast is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would outnumber the sand. When I am awake, I am still with you. Uh, taking the first half of that psalm, I love how much God loves us. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. And if there's one thing that this psalm indicates in the first part of this psalm is how much he loves us. How much the Bible says that Jesus is the bridegroom and we are the bride. And he is preparing his bride. But just like any bridegroom and any bride, they are in love with each other. Have, have, have you ever seen a marriage, you know, where the bride is so excited about her wedding? She's like, oh, uh, you got to see what he bought me today. And someone says, shut up and says, no, she can't help but speak about her bridegroom because she is so in love. And this is the walk of Christianity. That it should never be boring, it should never be a bunch of rules, it should not just be religion, just trying to obey a God that's out there, but it should be a life lived in love, so passionate. Why? Because he first loved us. He is relentlessly pursuing us with his love. I love in Psalm 139 that it says that he has searched me and he knows me. And maybe you're here at home watching this and say, yeah, he knows me. I've just done. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Um, he's, he knows when you sit down, when you rise up. He knows your thoughts from afar. He's acquainted with all of your ways before words on your tongue. He even knows it. And some of us, especially when I grew up, I grew up in a religion where it seemed like God was a harsh father. 
where it seemed like, oh, I'm going to be punished for this or I'm going to be punished for that. Yes, there is a fear of God that helps one departs from iniquity. We should fear him, but we should also know how much we are, he is in love with us. He is deeply in love with us. There's no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. No greater love. If there's one thing that would encapsulate the gospel, it is a love story about a God who relentlessly loves us so much that he's willing to give up heaven's best. He will bankrupt heaven because of his great love for you and send his only son to take your place because how much you are loved today. Have we allowed him to love us? Have we allowed him to embrace us? Have we allowed him to kiss us with the kisses of his lips? You might say, well, that's a little weird. I thought it was like, no, it's a God who was, he, he's a bridegroom. He's in love with us. And if there's a life of holiness, it should be lived because we are so in love with him that we just want to please him in every area of our lives. Amen. Um, there's been so many times in my Christian walk where I have messed up, where I have fallen short of his grace. I, re I remember that when I used to work at Holy Land Experience and I would close my eyes and I would pray and then I would just see Jesus with his arms out saying, come to me, I love you. And I, and I would be mad at him. I would say, but don't you know I just screwed up? I, and he was like, come to me, I love you, I love you, I love you. And that love would draw me to him and I would fall back in love with him once again. And his love would take away condemnation. His love would take away guilt. His love would take away fear when we know how passionately he loves us. Um, here uh, in verse 7, it says, where can I go from your presence? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. Now, I know that personally, not because I've been in the third heaven, but because I've been in airplanes. And no matter how high we go above the earth, I'm telling you, he's there. He can calm your fears on an airplane. He said, if I make my bed in Sheol, in other words, the depths of the earth, I've been in buildings that go down, down, down. And yes, he's still there. You cannot get away from God. He is, he loves you. Um, the Bible says um, that darkness is not dark to you and night is as bright as the day. In verse 11, there's, you know, if we were to say that darkness will overwhelm me and light around me will become night. This is a person that has grown in fear and fear is misplaced trust. And if there's one thing that characterizes our situation right now in this generation is that they are being led by fear. They are not going into buildings. They're staying in their houses because they're afraid of a virus. Maybe there's some people watching this right now and you are afraid to go to church because of a virus. I'm telling you, this is not the way of God. The way of God is that he's a lover and he passionately loves you and he wants you to come together with the saints. See, the Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that drips down Aaron's beard. And then the Bible says, this is where the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Do you know that there's a commanded blessing of God when you get together? Like, like you guys do every single morning. There's a commanded blessing of God when you come together in unity. Not just watching it at home. Watching it at home is good. But you must come together. Dwell in the presence of your brethren. The Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to, to dwell together in unity. When you come together with your, with, with your brothers in Psalms, it says that the Lord commanded the blessing. How many people want to be blessed by God? Well, there is a commanded blessing in your life. A commanded blessing from heaven. He commands the blessing when you come together and you dwell together in unity. And he refreshes you with his love. If there's one thing that should characterize a Christian, it's how much in love we are with God. But the only way that we can be in love is to know how much we are loved by him. It says in Ephesians, this has always amazed me. It says that we would know the height and the breadth and the length and the depth of his awesome love, which is beyond comprehension, so you can be filled with all the fullness of God. Who wants to be filled with all the fullness of God? I know I do. I want to be filled with the fullness of God. But it has to do with how much you know that you are loved by the Lord. 
This is the key. Some of us have felt like we've fallen so much in life. I'm telling you, he is the lifter of your head. He is the, the, the lover of all loves. He embraces you. And he wants to kiss you this morning with his love. The, in verse 11, it talked about a person that was very much in fear. And so many people are afraid today. I pray that his love would break your fear away. Because fear is misplaced trust. Fear is false evidence appearing real, F-E-A-R in, in, uh, in uh, English. But it's basically you're putting your trust in the unknown instead of putting your trust in the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. May you put your trust and your confidence in how much God, is lo God loves you. That he has, he, is, he has you in the palm of his hand. It says that, that you are kept by his power un, unto the day of your salvation. God keeps you in his love. And he's going to protect you. He's going to sustain you. Don't be crippled by fear. Be led by his love. Walk as a lover. And his love will set you free. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, it says in verse 17. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would outnumber the sand. Now picture all of the sand on the face of this earth. If you just fill up one jar with, the, with, with sand, it's, there's so much sand, we can't even think about how much grains of sand there are in one jar. Now think of the whole earth, and the Bible says he has more thoughts of you than the grains of sand on this entire earth. In other words, his thoughts for you are very much, are so much, that he wants you to know how deeply loved you are by him. There is, there is a thing on the depths of our hearts that makes us aware of the sinfulness of the past. Um, and rightly so that his Holy Spirit would draw you to repentance. But after you have asked Jesus to forgive you, after you have turned from your sins and you've turned and you said, God, forgive me. I want to give my whole life to you this morning. I want to know your love. I want to know your freedom. I want you to be my Lord. After that, his blood cleanses you and that he takes away condemnation. The Bible says that his blood will cleanse your conscience from dead works. He will erase your conscience from the, from the works of the past. So you can live before God with a pure and holy conscience. Um, I want to end the talking about this psalm with, a, with an account in the life of Jesus. Uh, we see, um, oh, and just before I, I talk about that, in verse 14 it says, For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. How many know you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Regardless of the circumstances of your birth, God says he formed you in your mother's womb. You are not a mistake. He, he formed you. He fashioned you. You are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. Yes, with all of your mistakes, with all of your failures, he says, I love you. I love you. Come to me. Let me clean you up from the inside out. And holiness will be the fruit of a life that's so in love with Jesus. You just don't want to not please him. You want to please him because you're in love with him. May you allow yourself to be loved by the Lord. Um, there is an account in, in, in the Bible um, where there is a woman named Martha, Mary, and they are in Lazarus' home. Martha invites Jesus into her house, says, Jesus, please come in, but she's the very one that's too busy preparing the house to spend time for Jesus. Meanwhile, her sister sits at the feet of Jesus. Oh, and this bothers Martha so much. And the only thing she does is she sits, and the Bible says, and she listened to his voice. And Martha was so busy working, she got so distraught. She said, Lord, command my sister, command her to, to help me. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you're worried and bothered about so many things, but Mary has chosen that which was better. And that which she has chosen will not be taken away from her. I know we have heard this account in the Bible so many times, but may we remember that what the Lord wants is us to sit down, is us to, our eyes to focus on him, not only to speak, but to listen. 
Because if you listen to the Lord, if you sit at his feet, you will hear one word over and over and over again. I love you. I love you. I love you. Will you allow the Lord to embrace you this morning? What do I mean by that? Taking away all religious barriers, just sitting before him, sitting before the love of your life and allowing him to embrace you, allowing him to kiss you. So many times when I close my eyes, I see a picture of Jesus hugging me, a picture of Jesus kissing me. I'm telling you, he wants to embrace you this morning. He, he's intimately acquainted with all of your ways. He is passionately pursuing you. And just like any bridegroom, he's in love with his bride. God is in love with you. Will you allow him to love you? Will you allow him to brace you and break off fear off of your life? That you will not be crippled by fear anymore, but you will be so in love that his love will set you free and you will not be able to stop talking about the love of your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. A person that's in love talks about their love. And that should be the natural overflow. Ministry is a life that's overflowing with the love of the Lord. Amen. 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 And he loves me. He loves me. He loves me. <laughs> may we know his love this morning. And may his love saturate your soul this morning. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this morning. I pray that we would know your love. We would know your embrace. Even in the song of songs, it says that may you kiss me with the kisses of your mouth. May, may, may we allow you to love us this morning. There's nothing that we could have done in the past, Lord God, that your blood cannot erase and your blood cannot forgive. The Bible says if we love you, we will obey you. True love will set us free to obey God. True love will help us to live a life of holiness. But we can't do that without us knowing how deeply we are loved by the Lord. May we sit at your feet today. May we not only speak, but may we listen. May our eyes gaze on our beloved Jesus. And may we know, may we experience your tangible love this morning. Maybe there's someone that's watching this online and you don't feel very lovely in the eyes of God. Maybe your past has so been so big and you have, an ov you have a hard time really believing that God loves you. And he's just not judging you, but he loves you. I want you to know he loves you today. Father, reveal your love to us. You are a God that passionately pursues us and you love us. Father, reveal your love to us today. And if there's someone even online and you're still in sin, I'm telling you, get out today. Now is the time of salvation. Turn from your sin and allow Jesus to love you. Let him be the lover. Let him be the Lord of all of your life. If someone is watching today online and you need Jesus, you want this love, you want to be forgiven of your sins, say this prayer with me this morning. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I surrender all of my life. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my love. I want to be forgiven. I believe your love is embracing me this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you, Jesus, for raising from the dead. I turn from my sins and I turn to you. Fill me with your love and be my Lord in Jesus' name. Father, bless every person. May we know your love. May we experience your love. May our heart be so in love with Jesus that the love of everything else, including for ministry, that the love of Jesus overflow our lives. And may our lives be the fruits of a life in love with the Lord. Bless us this morning and reveal your love to us in Jesus' name. Amen.